All right. Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining us today. I'd like to thank everyone who's joining us. Welcome to today's CNCF webinar, How to Keep Your Clusters Safe and Healthy. I'm Christy Tan, Marketing Communications Manager at CNCF. I'll be moderating today's webinar. We would like to welcome our presenters, Xu Ting Zhao, Software Engineer at Nermada, and Jim Bogwadia, Founder and CEO at Nermada. A few housekeeping items before we get started. During the webinar, you are not able to talk as an attendee. There is a Q&A box at the bottom of your screen. Please feel free to drop your questions in there and we'll get to as many as we can at the end. This is an official webinar of the CNCF and as such is subject to the CNCF Code of Conduct. Please do not add anything to the chat or questions that would be in violation of that Code of Conduct. Basically, please be respectful of all your fellow participants and presenters. Please also note that the recording and the slides will be available later today on the CNCF webinars page at cncf.io slash webinars. With that, I'll hand it over to Xu Ting and Jim to kick off today's presentation. Take it away. Thank you, Christy, and thanks everyone for joining. So what we're gonna do today is we're gonna cover four real world use cases and show you how workload security can be applied to them. So first we'll talk about validating Kubernetes configurations. Um, we'll also talk about how you can manage runtime security uh, for pods. We'll discuss how you can generate configurations using Kiverno, the policy management tool we're gonna discuss. And we'll also talk about how to apply fine-grained access controls in addition to Kubernetes RBAC uh, rules using Kiverno. So let's dive in. So the first use case we're gonna look at is validating configurations, right? So Kubernetes, of course, uh, provides very powerful declarative configuration management. Um, and these configurations can be checked based on your, you know, based on open API schema. Um, so here we're not talking about checking, just validating the schema, but we're talking about validating uh, whether configurations match for compliance, for best practice reasons, whether your clusters are configured correctly. And the reality is a majority of security issues that we see in production are caused by misconfigurations or by missing configuration um, because sometimes these, the, these aspects can be complex. Also with Kubernetes, because again, if you're looking at a workload and it's based on the declarative uh, principles of the configuration, some of the concerns with the configuration may not be related or directly uh, related to what developers uh, need to do, but maybe more operator concerns or environment specific concerns. So while tools like Customize and Helm can, can help with this in a CI CD pipeline, they can't enforce these best practices and compliance uh, within your clusters. So some, some samples of what we're talking about here um, are things like you know, um, making sure your pods have readiness and liveness probes, making sure you're configuring resource quotas, not just to guarantee that your workload gets resources, but that a single workload is not impacting other workloads in your cluster and, and causing problems with other workloads. Making sure that images are, uh, are immutable and you're not you know, accidentally or inadvertently running uh, an older or different version of an image because you're using a mutable tag like latest. Restricting images to certain registries where you've performed your scanning. And, and of course, we'll talk, you know, pod security, which is a very important aspect of the runtime security concerns within your cluster. So let's, let's discuss how policy management can solve this, and then we'll take a look at what Kiverno specifically also provides. So first off, Kubernetes itself is a very pluggable, extensible system. Um, admission controllers in Kubernetes can be extended, and you can validate or mutate different API requests. So typically, policy managers, tools like Kiverno, uh, will al also tools like OPA Gatekeeper, can work as policy managers, can look at incoming configurations, and can validate configurations based on policies that you write. So there are general purpose you know, policy management tools, but these require learning a different language um, and knowing how to manage policies in, within their paradigm, within their domain. 
Here, what we've done with Kiverno, as we'll look at, is Kiverno is built specifically for Kubernetes uh, and, and does not require that, you know, that steeper learning curve. Also, of course, you know, it's possible to write your own admission controllers, but doing this for each type of check that you want to manage becomes a non-trivial effort. So let's talk a little bit about what Kiverno exactly does, right? So Kiverno is a policy management tool. It's an open source project uh, developed specifically for Kubernetes. It's not a general purpose policy management tool. Um, it does not provide you know, a, a different language or different paradigm for managing policies, but in fact uses the same declarative style of configuration management that Kubernetes does to for writing and managing policies. So policies are custom resources. Policy violations are also custom resources. And Kiverno works really well with different Kubernetes concepts and patterns, like we'll see with pod controllers, also with generating events, uh, with, you know, uh, with also scanning things within the Kubernetes cluster. Um, it, can, it can work um, ex extremely well where to introduce Kiverno into your existing production clusters becomes a lot easier, right? You don't have to impact existing workloads and this lets you roll out things uh, in a very um, controlled manner. So here's exactly how Kiverno works. So it plugs in uh, as a you know, webhook receiver for any API server request, and it um, handles both validation as well as mutation webhooks. And for each of these requests, Kiverno will get an admission review request based on policies that you configure. It's smart enough to optimize that configuration. So it'll only receive requests for the objects and for the types of um, you know, data that you want to validate. And then Kiverno, uh, you know, based on the policies you define as resources in your cluster, Kiverno can validate, mutate, or even generate new configurations based on uh, these policies and rules. So Kiverno also does background scanning. So for existing workloads, which might have been a uh, running before you introduce a new policy rule, Kiverno will scan these, will generate policy violations. So either you can put a policy into a mode to block a resource request, or it can generate a violation um, and report that, which you can get through kubectl or any other reporting tool. So here's what a policy looks like in Kiverno, right? So it's a very simple, um, you know, de sort of declarative style configuration. A policy contains several different rules, um, and each rule will have a match and exclude clause. The match will define, you know, which resources the policy, the rule op operates on. And these could be based on label selectors, resource names, kinds, namespaces. So lots of flexibility. Kiverno also automatically maps based on the admission request. Um, it will take user and subject information, map that to the set of groups uh, that you have configured in your cluster. So you can, you know, you can write policies that match or exclude based on roles. Uh, and groups, which is also very powerful. And then the rule has either a mutate, a validate, or a generate section, which is where the, the business logic, uh, the domain logic of the policy lies. So here's an example. Um, it's a simple example where what we're trying to do here is validate that your pods are not running with root user uh, enabled, right? So to do that in a pod security uh, context, you can either check this at the pod level or at the container level. And this rule that we're looking at over here is matching for resource kind pod. And then it's validating that using the any pattern syntax, which means that it's an or uh, for either of these type of uh, declarations in the, sub, uh, in the list. So each checking for the security context at the pod level and making sure that run as non-root is set to true, or it will check that at the container level and either condition will satisfy this rule, uh, which means that now your resource passes this rule, otherwise you can choose to block or a report a violation on it. So another simple example, and this is of a validation check where if you wanna enforce something like making sure that all of your workloads have a label, 
Um, and in this case, example, we're showing that you, let's say you require a label called app. It's very easy to do with the wildcard notation where we're not validating what the content is, but just making sure that all pods have, again, this label. Um, and Kiburno supports a number of different operators um, and also wildcarding on, you know, things like names. So that makes it very, very easy to write uh, these type of rules and validate them. So just a quick comparison um, uh, between Kiburno and some of the existing tools. And a question we get is, you know, when should we use something like OPA versus when would you want to use uh, a tool like Kiverno? So first off, again, Kiverno is very specific to Kubernetes. If you need policies to apply to more than Kubernetes, if you're managing uh, these for other configurations, general purpose tools like OPA are extremely powerful and extremely capable of doing that. Uh, Kiverno is focused on Kubernetes checks. So uh, the, but the main difference here, and especially for Kubernetes administrators uh, and users is how Kiverno uh, plugs in into Kubernetes and the fact that you, when you're writing policies, you're not using a different language like Rego, which is what OPA uses. And here, as an example, we're showing what a policy to check for read-only file systems as your root file system in your pod looks like both in Rego and in the Kiverno syntax. So as you see, Kiverno again, matches what you would expect a Kubernetes resource to look like. If you're familiar with pods and deployments, so on, uh, it becomes very easy to write these policies. All right, so next, let's look at this in action and Shooting is gonna walk us through a, a quick demo of what a validating configuration looks like with Kiverno. All right, thanks, Jim. Hey, everyone, this is Shooting here. So today I'm gonna show you a few of demos we have. The first one I'm gonna show you is how you can quickly get started with Kiverno and then use the, some of the sample policies to validate your existing cluster configurations. All right, so first let me switch my screen to the manifest. Um, in order to deploy Kiverno to your cluster, you just need to apply this install.yaml to your cluster. It has a bunch of uh, resources defined. And if you want to install a different version of a cluster, you just need to update the image here. And this is available on our GitHub page, but today I'm going to um, using this most recent release candidate. So I just update the image tag here. All right, a quick heads up of my cluster. I'm using a 116 Kubadium cluster here. So uh, let's first create the Kiverno. So I'm gonna do kubgato create minus f install the yaml. So you can see there are a bunch of uh, resources being created. Let's quickly check if Kiverno is running. It's in the namespace running as a deployment. Okay, so now you can see the pod is running in the running state. All right. So the first policy I, I want to show today is a validate policy, which can use to validate your existing configura uh, workloads configurations. What you can see here, this policy is applied to pod, and it is validating the allowed images registries. I just put the, um, some uh, allowed image registries here, but you can always customize with your own preferred registries. All right. And we have this failure action flag set in the uh, Kiverno policy to enforce, which means for the incoming request, if the resource violates the policy, the creation will be blocked by this, key, uh, by this Kiverno policy. And on the right-hand side of my terminal, you can say I have a simple pod here, which is not coming from the allowed, allowed registries I defined. So if you create the resource, Kiverno would block the creation. All right, let's first apply the policy to your cluster. You can do kubectl create minus f with the manifest strict image registries dot yaml. All right, then the I think the policy is created. If you want to check, you can do kubectl get cluster policy and then you will have the list of all the policies exist, right? And uh, I already have a few workloads running in my cluster. 
can let's quickly check that. I have a few pods there. And in the default namespace, I'm running these two pods. And if you get kubectl get policy violation, you will see that um, one of the pods is actually violating the uh, policy. So it creates the violation. And let's take a look at this violation. It's saying that which rule is violating the policy. You can get the detailed information on this violation. And this is the resource. And here is the policy, right? So this is how Kiverno policies can validate your existing configurations. But now let's take a look at uh, if you create a new resource, what will happen? So as I showed to you, I have a simple part, which is violate the policy. So if I do kubectl create that part, resource.yaml, since I have the uh, failure action set to enforce, you can see the creation is immediately blocked by Kiverno webhook. And this is why we're blocking it, right? So if you don't want to make your policy a hard rule, you can always edit your uh, failure action. So here you have cluster policy. Let's get the name of the policy and say kubectl edit cluster policy with name. I'm going to change this failure action to, in, to audit. So that means it will not block the resource creation, but to report as a violation. Let's save and exit. And then let's try to create the resource again. OK, so this time you can see the creation is allowed. But if you check policy violation, you will get one more, which is created on the pod we just applied. OK, so this is the first example I'm going to uh, I have to validate the configurations. And next, let me hand off to Jim to talk about the pod security. All right, thank you. Um, yeah, so in this next section, we'll cover, you know, what Kiverno can do to help with pod security itself, right? And as everyone probably knows uh, or should know if you're running Kubernetes in production is pod security and configuring, um, you know, runtime security is very essential. However, PSPs, pod security policies, which are a beta feature in Kubernetes are difficult to configure. Uh, they have some, you know, intrinsic problems in their design, like the authorization model and also are very, you know, or almost impossible to roll out on a production cluster without impacting the production workloads. So because of this, um, you know, pod security policies, PSPs are, you know, scheduled to be deprecated and the, the discussions going on in the community, there is a proposal for pod security profiles. Um, so would definitely recommend if, you know, for folks more interested in this, there is a deep dive video from the last KubeCon uh, which covers some of the issues um, and some of the, you know, kind of recommendations uh, and thoughts moving forward on this. But let's talk about what Kiverno can do uh, to help with this. So first off, the the discussions on the pod security profiles are per the proposal here uh, that's being reviewed is to have three levels. So have a privilege level, which of course allows everything which is insecure but then to have a default level, which uh, allows you know, some basic security, and then a restricted level, which allows, configures, uh, or requires proper security configurations for your pods. So based on this, um, what we have done is if you go to the Kiverno repo, there are some best practice policies, and there are specific things which you can um, you know, check for. Yeah. So some examples here are, you know, things like, you know, which are in the restricted level to, for example, to disable privilege escalation, to require, you know, read-only file root file systems like we looked at in a previous example, disallow uh, use of host file systems. Those are types of things you would want to check for 
um, as part of the different levels. So Kiverno already has about you know, 15 to 20 best practice policies defined, which are in the Git repo. And we will, you know, we will continue to expand the available best practices to match the pod security profile definitions. So basically, you to be able to use Kiverno uh, to be able to audit and make sure that your pods are configured at the right security level for your cluster. So let's take a look at this in action. And we're shooting is going to show us a quick demo of how, how a pod security policy can be applied through Kiverno. All right, so um, for the demo for the uh, pod security context, I have a validate rule, but before I j jump to the example, I want to bring up a use case and the problem when you're using the pod security policy. The operators typically want the policies to apply to all pods independent of which controller creates them. So the best, pra best practice is to write the policy at the pod level. But the problem here is that the pods are typically created by pod controllers. So the error reporting at the pod controller level, for example, the deployment will provide you a better user experience as you will know the response immediately back. Right? And so the uh, proposed solution in Kiverno is to auto-generate the pod controller policies from the rules that are defined on pod. And this Autogen feature is enabled by default, and you can always manage by the annotation to either disable it or to customize your or to define with your customized power controllers. Okay, so the demo I have for this is to validate the power security context. As you can see here, I have a validation rule applied to pod, and I'm trying to validate the security context. This run as non root set to true both at the, either at the pod level or inside the container. So Kiverno has this uh, any pattern block defined, which allows the user to define multiple patterns, right? And also here, the failure action is set to enforce. And then I have this annotation to say that I want, to auto I want Kiverno to auto-generating an additional rule on the deployment itself, right? On the right hand side of my uh, screen, I have a simple deployment. So um, since I have the failure action set to enforce, I would expect Kiverno to block my resource creation immediately. As you can see, I, have, I don't have the security contact set here. Okay, so let's go to my cluster and then let me create the policy first. Kubcuddle minus F with disallow root user dot YAML. Again, to list all the policies, you can do kubcuddle get cluster policy violation, or we have a short name for that called SIBO. And here you can see there is a new policy created, and let's look at the rules inside it. All right, remember I only have one rule deploy, uh, defined on the pod, but in this case, Kiverno is auto-converting auto the rules to the deployment, and we have the prefix called autogen to indicate it's generated by Kiverno. And you can see in the spec, the uh, context is converted to the pod template spec. All right, um, so let me create the let me try to create the deployment. I would expect it at this case, Kimerno will block the deployment creation. So this allow root user resources. Right? So you see the, the rule on deployment is actually blocking the resource creation. Again, if you want to make the uh, policy a soft policy, you can just change the failure action to audit. So here I'm gonna do edit cluster policy, disallow root user. So I'll change this failure action to audit again. Audit. Okay, then let's try to create the resource again. 
Now this time you can see the resources being created successfully. And if you get, if you do Kubcado get policy violation. Um, actually, let me do it again. You can see there is only one policy violation created on this disallow user policy, but only on the deployment. So uh, you will get the error reporting on the pod level, pod controller level in this case. All right, um, this is the uh, auto gen feature I want to demo. So next, the Jim will talk about the generating, generate policy. Okay, yeah, before we move to that, there was a question in the Q&A panel on pod security policies and to clarify whether Kiverno will replace uh, or can replace PSPs. So the, the intent is that for Kiverno to support uh, the different pod security profiles that we qu quickly uh, demonstrated and showed. So based on the different profile levels you want to configure for your cluster, Kiverno will be able to validate and provide checks for those. In terms of migrating from you know, PSPs to Kiverno policies, uh, we are thinking about you know, whether we can write a tool to actually generate Kiverno policies because they're just YAMLs and resources, um, you know, whether we can generate these directly from PSPs. That's something that's being discussed, but it's not something we have committed to, but happy to, of course, um, if there's some ideas or if folks wanna contribute to that, um, you know, happy to do that in the context of our project. There's also another question on whether Kiverno supports sending logs or enforcement events to centralized, um, you know, security tools. So Kiverno produces policy violations as shooting showed uh, as resources. So these can be collected by any, uh, anything that's, you know, plugged in into the API server or any tool that can you know, get Kubernetes resources. So certainly you could write tools which will receive events on resources on Kiverno policy violations that, um, and, and as you're watching those, these can be then shipped off to a central logging system uh, as required. Okay, so let's uh, dive in into the next section where we're gonna cover um, you know, what Kiverno can do to generate configurations, right? So first let's discuss, or let's, you know, frame the problem that we're trying to solve here. So typically in Kubernetes, when you're creating a resource or an object, um, you know, that resource gets created, but there might be some supporting resources around it that also need to get configured. So one, one great example of this is with namespaces. So when you create a namespace, perhaps for a team, perhaps for a new, a uh, user in within a cluster. You may also want to create things like roles and role bindings for the namespace owner. You may want to set up a default network policy, which is a good best practice. Um, and starting with something like deny all and then letting the namespace owner add, you know, constructs or allow um, different ingress or egress rules for their workload. And you probably also, and uh, again, another best practice is to set up a quota for that namespace itself. So things like this you want to generate uh, when, as soon as the namespace is created. There's other examples where you might want to generate some defaults too, but uh, we'll take a deeper look at this example because it's very relevant uh, to multi-tenancy and to be able to share a cluster. So with Kiverno, there is a generate rule uh, within policies that you can use. And the way this works is um, it can either generate configurations based on uh, an existing resource. So based on an existing network policy that you have in your cluster. So you can create a clone of that, or you can copy inline data. So you can just declare the data directly in your policy rule, and that data will be used to generate the new configuration. So very simple, very straightforward. Um, and we'll talk about some thoughts on how we are gonna extend this, uh, this feature uh, in future releases as well. But let's take a look at a demo. So I'll hand off to Shooting to show us how that looks like in action. Sorry, I'm on mute. Um, so for the generate policy I have for today, I have two policies. And the first one is what Jim has showed, is a generate policy, which triggers on the namespace creation. 
and it is to generate the default network policy into your new, new namespace. And the second generate policy is more uh, advanced policy that is to achieve, like to grant the uh, some permissions to a user. So in my setup, I have created a user John, which only who only has the permission to create the namespace. But once the namespace is created, this generate policy will create a cluster role here. And it is to say, I want grant John, this user John, with, a, with the uh, delete permission for namespace, for the targeted namespace. So that uh, John should be able to delete the uh, new created namespace. And the second rule is just the cluster role binding, which binds to the above cluster role. And the following rules of this generate policy is to uh, grant John the tenant or the namespace admin role to user John. So here you can see I have a cluster role binding which binds to the cluster role admin. And also I have the cluster role binding to bind to the edit and the view role. So in this case, after uh, the generate policy is applied, the this user John will have the namespace access or the uh, will become the namespace administrator. Okay, uh, before I have, um, before I show the demo, I think I need to clean up my environment. Let me delete this namespace demo. And then have okay, so um, let's check what permission John has. Kukado R. I'm doing a group cuddle as can I dash dash list and with this flag s I'm saying that I want to check user John's permission. Okay, so you can say John only has the permission to create the namespace. All right, and then let's go ahead and apply those to generate policy. Generate not network policy and then have a second one called generate namespace access control. Okay, again, let's get the list of the policies. You can see now there are two more policies created. And then let's, let's use user John to create the namespace. So I'm going to do Kupkado create namespace demo dash dash as user John. All right, so with the these two generate policy, um, if I do kubectl auth again, I should uh, I, I should be able to see that John has uh, more permissions than what we saw before. So let's get the namespace, trying to verify if it's created successfully. Okay, then let's do kubectl auth can I dash dash list as John. Now you can see John has a bunch of uh, more permissions and the one we're looking for particular is to is this delete permission of this demo namespace, right? So now basically John becomes the uh, administrator of this name of this demo namespace. And if you want to further verify, let's do Kupado. Can I up, update? Network policy as strong. Right, so it returned yes. And remember, we have another pol policy to uh, generate the default network policy. Let's verify if that is being created successfully. Okay, cool. So you see the network policy is created in this demo namespace successfully. All right, this is the generate policy uh, I want to demo. So you can see we use the generate policy to achieve or to say automatically achieve the multi-tenancy environment. Okay, 
So next, uh, Jim will talk about the fine-grained access control using the Kiberno policy. Yes, yeah, so in the last section, uh, what we saw is how Kiberno can generate new configurations based on existing data or just based on data that you uh, specify in your policy. But what you probably are wondering is just from that demo is now that, you know, let's say in that example, John was the owner of the namespace. They have access to all of the objects in the namespace. What's preventing, you know, that user from just deleting uh, network policies and things like that, which were set up by the administrator, right? So that's one example where Kubernetes RBAC is not sufficient. There are several other examples that uh, you know we are seeing in um, different um, you know different uh, real world examples where um, where uh, you know RBAC operates on objects uh, with and as well as API requests, but that sometimes you what you want to do is specify rules which can be applied to um, specific namespaces, specific users, object types, things like that, which cannot be covered with the standard RBAC uh, definitions, right? So in this case, Kiverno can help, and we'll take a look at you know a new construct that we have introduced um, with our release candidate uh, 116, where what Kiverno does is introduces a new type of validation rule, which simply denies uh, based on certain conditions. So in this example, what we're looking at is if your resource has a particular label, and in this case, the label happens to be managed by Kiverno, so it's one of these resources generated by Kiverno, uh, what you can do is you can then prevent certain operations from being applied to that resource, right? So again, in this example, we're saying the request operation. So that's looking up the admission request, looking at the data and saying the operation here, if it equals delete, prevent that. Notice that we also have added an exclusion because of course you don't want to prevent everybody from this. Uh, so you want to make sure that your cluster admin can still um, you know, operate on that and can still perform the action required. But the admin user role that we saw for in the previous example should be blocked by this. So let's take a look at that live um, and you know, see that also in action. Okay, so the last policy, denying policy here, as uh, Jim has described, I have three rules defined. The first one is to, uh, based on the request operation update, I wanna deny the uh, matched or the selected resources, but uh, I'm saying that I wanna exclude cluster admin. And again, same here, I want to deny on the uh, deletion request and with the same set of uh, resources, right? And the last rule I have is the is applied to network policy in particular. And here I'm saying that no matter what operation is, I want to delete all of them. But again, there's still an uh, exception on cluster administrator. Okay. Um, in the last generate example, what I have shown you is to make John as a namespace owner or the namespace administrator. So that means John can basically do everything within the namespace. And uh, here you can see if I check the permission on uh, update the network policy, it returns me yes, right? So, but if I have the policy, deny policy created to the cluster, which means if John trying to update the network policy, we're gonna uh, re reject that uh, update request. So let me uh, create the policy first. And then just to verify the policy is created, we have this new policy, okay. So let's uh, actually, uh, try to update the network policy with user John and see what will happen. First, let me get the name of that network policy. All right, uh, by updating, I'll just uh, randomly insert a label to the network policy. So I'm gonna do kubectl label network policy with the name and I'm just insert some random value. So here, what I'm saying that I want to update this network policy as user John. Okay. 
Okay, so you see the response that uh, this update request is blocked with this policy, and there are actually two rules are blocking the request, right? So um, let's check if I'm updating this label with the cluster admin. You see the label is su inserted su successfully. So with the deny policy, basically you can achieve a fine grain access control beyond what Kubernetes are back does. All right, so that's pretty much all the demo I have today. Let me hand off to Jim. I think we're ready for the summary. Yes, yeah, so what we looked at today is four real world use cases that we've seen, and there's probably plenty more, you know, and would love to hear from folks on what they're seeing and where, uh, you know, a policy management tool like Kiverno could help. So first off, you know, policies are extremely useful, whether you're using Kiverno or the other tools like uh, OPA, Gatekeeper, um, managing configurations through policies, is a you know is almost becomes a requirement as you scale the you know, number of clusters um, and the types of workloads that you're managing in Kubernetes. Kiverno is built for Kubernetes, so it's very native to Kubernetes. It can validate, mutate, as well as you know um, generate configurations, and it's very easy to roll out. So you can start with like an auditing mode. Uh, see where you might have some problems with existing workloads, and then slowly migrate to enforcing these checks. Uh, Kiverno also supports, you know, best practices for pod securities. It has powerful features like, you know, automatically generating rules or applying rules on controllers, which again, because it's native to Kubernetes, it allows that type of, you know, for a good user experience uh, for Kubernetes administrators as well as end users. And as you saw in the demos, it's extremely simple to use. Um, it, it takes you know, just a few commands to get it installed up and running in your clusters. Um, we have a set of best practices policies to get started with, also in the Git repo that you can try and apply. Um, and you know, would love to get more feedback and thoughts. And we're constantly adding, you know, again, more policies, as well as some interesting new features uh, that are upcoming in subsequent releases. Yeah, so speaking of new features, um, we, we saw the generate, you know, um, in the generate uh, policy rule in action. So one, one feature request that we have, which we are working on, um, is not only to be able to generate configurations, but to keep configurations in sync with the source, right? So um, imagine like if you have a set of namespaces that you want to manage, or if you just have some common configurations that you want um, but now if you change that common configuration, you also want all the generated resources to be updated. So that's the use case that the generate and sync, uh, um, you know, will, will handle. There's also uh, another important, you know, feature. So today Kiverno operates on admission requests and can look at any data within the admission requests, including, as we saw, user information, um, as well as the resource information in the admission request. But another use case to extend on that is how do you, you know, if you want to look up things from your cluster, if you want to check things, for example, you know, what's configured and then make a decision within a validation rule, uh, that's where you want to run a query on an existing resource. So Kiverno can, you know, will be able to support that through even things like config maps. So this allows you to do, you know, more powerful variable substitution but also be able to look up other resources uh, through JMAS path like syntax, which Kiverno supports today for conditions. And then finally adding more operations, more operators, like even doing regex type matching. So again, the philosophy here is we, you know, we're not inventing any new language or any new way of doing things, but using standard you know, best practices, widely adopted tools like JMAS path uh, for JSON processing, uh, as well as, you know, an overlay like syntax, like you saw with some of the web policies itself. Right, and uh, we'd love to hear any feedback from you or the use cases you want us to support. Feel free to open up and feature request on our GitHub repo. And uh, let's, let me quickly navigate to our GitHub repo. And you can see here's, the basic introductions and we have the example policies and even more like uh, 
on how you're getting started with Kiverno, how you write the policy. So feel free to check it out. And if you're interested or you want to discuss with us, feel free to join this Slack channel. And we're also planning on hosting a um, monthly community meeting so that uh, we can give you uh, the community a quick update on Kiverno and maybe the demos of the new features. So yeah. All right. Uh, yeah. Yeah, a couple more questions in the Q&A panel. Um, so one question was on the difference between OPA and, and Kiverno. So I think we covered uh, a lot of that as we went along in the presentations. And the main difference is how you're writing and managing policies, but then also the ease of use and the fit into Kubernetes. So, um, you know, and of course, if you're looking for a general purpose policy tool, something like OPA works well. If you're looking for something Kubernetes specific, um, you know, give Kiverno a try and that um, because it's designed for Kubernetes, the experience here is a lot different and, and works better uh, for Kubernetes workloads. Another question was on, you know, um, can Kiverno be used with Kubernetes 1.14? And I think we had some issues with, um, I'm trying to remember shooting if it was 1.13 versions or um, so there were some problems with webhook configurations. Do you recall offhand right. which version that was? Right, I think after 1.14, they uh, allow us to configure the timeout of, of the webhook, but before 1.14, right. we can't. So we have some problem with that. Right, so we recommend using, you know, I, I think it was 1.14, 6 right. or 7 and above, um, you know, which, but, there is a fix for that webhook timeout. There are some details in our Git repo or reach out on Slack and we can help answer that in more detail. Um, another question was on for the matching of resources, does it allow you know, for pods to be selected in a namespace with a precise label uh, where you don't know the name of the namespace in advance, but you know the label. So yes, Kiverno supports you know, label selectors. So you can use uh, label selectors, uh, even if you don't know the name of the namespace up front. And another interesting thing is because Kiverno, um, you know, is policies are just first class resources. You can also generate very specific policies as namespaces are getting created, right? So if you want a policy to just apply on one namespace, um, when that namespace is created, you can create more Kiverno policies through a Kiverno policy. Um, it's a little bit of, you know, sort of inception going on there, but uh, that's a powerful use case to do very specific matching um, and, and restrict your policy scope. Okay, I think those were most of the, the, all of the questions we had on chat. So feel free to, we have a few more minutes, but so if there's any other questions, feel free to answer. Otherwise, uh, I see Christy's back, so hey. happy to end off. Yeah, um, we'll just give folks a minute here if there are any last minute questions. Um, that was a, oh, did, oh, we got that one, okay. Um, Okay, well, I think those are all the questions. Um, thank you again, Xu Ting and Jim for a great presentation today. Uh, thank you all for joining us. I'd like to remind you that the slides and the recording will be available later today on the CNCF website. Uh, we look forward to seeing you at a future CNCF webinar and have a great day. Stay safe, everybody. Thank you. Bye. Thanks. Bye.